Okay, let's talk about lane patterns. Uh, there's a lot of options nowadays when it comes to lane machines, when it comes to tools. We've got one of the, the premier experts in the field of lane maintenance. Uh, we have John Janitz with us here. and We're going to get a chance to talk about uh, just lane patterns and what it means to a bowler. Now, John, you're a, uh, a pattern specialist and uh, a lane technician here at Kegel. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of experience running lane machines uh, all around the world. Yep. Uh, and a lot of experience as well as bowling on them. So you've got an expertise that kind of fits multiple places. So it's a great opportunity for us to talk about what do lane patterns mean to bowlers? So uh, real quickly, just in your opinion, what are some of the things that if I'm looking at a lane pattern as a player, I want to pay attention to, and, uh, and what am I going to do when I see this information? Well, three, three of the main things that you want to be looking at is, you know, one, your overall pattern distance, because one good general rule of thumb is taking the pattern distance and subtracting 31. That kind of gives you an idea about what board down the lane you want your ball to be at. Uh, as it's exiting the oil pattern. Now, there's going to be some other factors that are going <clears> to <throat> determine whether the best part of the lane, whether it be maybe a little bit farther left or a little farther right of that, that'll give you more margin of error, such as the lane surface. You know, higher friction lane surface will probably it'll probably be a little bit farther right. Yeah. Lower surface friction uh, surface will probably be a little bit farther left. Same thing with the oil <clears throat> actual oil pattern load structure. You know, if the stru load structure is a little bit wider, then you're going to probably want you know th that exit point is going to probably be a little bit farther right. But uh, you know, one main thing is, like I said, the actual pattern distance. That'll tell you where you want your ball at as a good starting point at the end of the oil pattern. Um, in reference to what we may see on a program sheet, sometimes you look at the, the number series on the side of the page and it says two to two there. What does two to two mean? Okay, <clears throat> basically what that refers to is it, it's a line of oil from the two bore on the left to the two bore on the right. Now, with the flex lane machine and a lot of the previous generations of our the Kegel lane machines, the machine applies oil pretty much like an inkjet printer. You've got a, an oil head that moves back and forth at a constant rate, <clears throat> and there are four main things in the program, of the design of the program sheet that we can control. Now we can control the amount of two to twos <clears throat> going forward and the reverse, and we can also control what board that line of oil will start and stop on. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a two to two, it can be a seven to seven, it can be a 10 to 10, it can be a 15 to 15. So we can control what board that line of oil starts and stops on. We can control <clears throat> the number of those loads lines of oil, what we call loads, going forward and in the reverse. Okay. We can control the speed of the lane machine. Now, if you apply one of these lines of oil from two to two right at the foul line, and then you just buff it all the way to the end of 39 feet, well, you're not going to have a lot of oil right near the end of the oil, right, right near, the, near the gutter. But <clears throat> if you apply four, five, six of those as the machine's being applied going forward, you're going to get a lot more conditioner right toward the outside at the end of the oil pattern, which, you know, obviously, as you know, the more oil you get toward the gutter, down the lane, the ball's not going to hook. Now, so <clears throat> you're probably not going to be able to swing it very much. So you know, the number of two to twos will have a lot to do you know, by looking at that in the oil pattern graph, especially going forward, will kind of give you an idea about how much you're going to be able to swing the ball toward the outside. The other thing you want to look at, too, is the oil pattern volume. Now, like I said, you know, in today's game, you know, the average oil pattern distance for house patterns and a lot of competitive patterns is around 23 to 24 milliliters. Now, you might go to a tournament and you might see 27 or 28 milliliters. Well, that may seem like a lot of oil, but in any case, it is. But you have to also look at the kind of lane surface that's being applied to. If it's an older surface with, you know, and or a very high surface friction synthetic or maybe wood lanes, you know, you still might see a lot of hook even with 28, 29, 30 mils. So, you know, the lane surface in those regards will still have, you know, will still be the biggest dictator of you know, how much friction you're going to see total in the pattern, but, you know, at least knowing the amount of volume that you're going to have on the lane will kind of at least give you an idea from an equipment standpoint about maybe how strong the cover stocks you might need or, you know, for that matter, how strong, you know, you know how strong of a ball or, or how strong of a range of bowling balls you may need. Okay, so those three basic things, it sounds pretty simple. If I know the distance, I do a little bit of math, I can figure out maybe where to get the ball down the lane. Mm -hmm. If I'm looking at the number of two to twos, like you mentioned, that's gonna maybe give me an idea of how much of angle I may wanna to play toward the gutters as to how much hold I have or how much uh, dry or friction I've got. Right. And then the third thing you mentioned was the volume. The volume's gonna help me kind of dictate maybe which bowling ball I'm gonna use, how strong of a surface, what kind of a cover stock, and it give me a, a, an idea of maybe in my arsenal where to go. So three great things looking at a program sheet. If you really wanna just, gather some information and take it out there and apply it right away that you can look at. And that's great information moving forward so that our players will have a, a good understanding of what they're looking at and how to make that part of their, their competition, part of their play. Absolutely.